This is what student pilots struggle with the most when it comes to perfecting the approach to landing. If you've ever practiced any landings, you may be finding it difficult to even arrive at your aiming point, let alone your touchdown point. What you need to understand is that landings are all about energy management. I mentioned briefly in the landing checks video that speed is an energy and altitude is an energy. And that in order to control those energies properly when landing, we need to use the technique pitch for airspeed and power for altitude. And I've also said before that we need to do consistent things to get consistent landings, but what are the consistencies we're shooting for after all the landing checks are done? How do we control the total energy we're carrying into each landing? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I do want to preface that this is a little bit above and beyond the private pilot level, but thinking about landings in this way really helped me wrap my head around it when I started flying eight years ago, and I hope it does for you as well. Also, the FAA gets into even more detail than I do in chapter four and chapter nine of the airplane flying handbook. So it's definitely worth a read as they do have some good in-depth ways of looking at landings. But anyway, let's get into it. If you've ever taken an introductory physics class, you've probably heard the terms kinetic energy and potential energy. But don't worry if not, I'm gonna explain them here. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. And in our case, it's how fast we're going, or in other words, our airspeed. And more specifically, as it pertains to us pilots, kinetic energy is our indicated airspeed, which is more so how fast we're traveling through the air rather than over the ground. So the more indicated airspeed you have, the more kinetic energy you have. Now, potential energy is how high we are above the ground, or in our case, altitude. Due to the fact that this gravity thing exists, we are constantly accelerating downward, so it says that Isaac Newton guy, thereby giving us the potential to gain kinetic energy when we are above the surface of the Earth. So whether we are bungee jumping, skydiving, or flying an airplane, potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy, or in our case, altitude can be converted into airspeed. And it works the other way around too. We can exchange kinetic energy and turn it into potential by using our speed to gain altitude. Pretty cool to think about it that way. So with landings being all about energy management, we need to be able to manipulate the total of these two energies to make sure that we don't overshoot or undershoot the intended aiming point. The total energy, so potential energy plus kinetic energy, can also be referred to as mechanical energy. So we need to be able to control the total amount of mechanical energy, and we also need to be able to maintain the correct amount of each type of energy for our entire approach. Meaning we don't want too much or too little of either kinetic or potential when coming into land. So in this part, Part one of energy management. Let's start off with how we control the total or mechanical energy. Now there are two ways that we can control the total amount of energy in this system when landing. Now with any physics problem, you start by defining the system and labeling all of the forces. But ultimately it boils down to controlling drag, which we'll call D, and controlling thrust, which we'll refer to as T. The tools we have in our toolbox to control drag when landing are high lift drag devices, such as flaps, or performing what's called a forward slip which we'll talk about in a later video in this landings mastery course. And the way to control thrust is by simply manipulating the throttle. So in a simplified way, if I have more thrust or T than I do drag or D, then I will be increasing the mechanical or total energy and vice versa. If I chop my throttle and deploy all of my flaps, that means I will be losing mechanical energy out of the system. So flaps and throttle are the tools to control the total amount of energy in the system in order for us to not overshoot or undershoot the the aiming point. What that translates to, if we are coming in too high and too fast, so too much total energy stored as altitude and airspeed, we can simply add flaps and or decrease the throttle to try to bring down the total energy we have in the system. If we're low on energy when coming into land, we can hold off on adding flaps, so keep D a constant and or increase the throttle. And of course, which one you change in either scenario just depends on the situation. Now, side note here that you're probably going to want to talk with your flight instructor about at a future flight lesson and you don't typically want to take flaps out after putting them in when you're on your final approach. We touched on this in the power off stall video, but bringing the flaps up drastically reduces the lift and counteracts the benefit of the reduction of drag in the short term. In the long term, this makes sense, and it's the reason that we don't have flaps down all the time. But basically, you'll rapidly fall out of the sky if you throw all of your flaps up at once, so not always the best thing to do when short and final. All right, so that covers how to control the
the total amount of energy when landing. It's a balancing act between thrust and drag. But what about maintaining the proper amount of each kind of energy? How do we keep our kinetic energy in that 60 to 65 knot range for a Cessna 172 and our potential energy on the proper glide path? Well, that comes down to using pitch for airspeed and power for altitude and realizing that you can't change one without slightly affecting the other. So instead of the binary approach of pitch for airspeed and power for altitude, the FAA actually recommends considering it as more of an energy centered approach. And we're going to cover that technique in part two of this series. So in this video, you'll learn that indicated airspeed is your kinetic energy and altitude is your potential energy. You learn that you can trade airspeed for altitude and vice versa. You also learn the tools to control total or mechanical energy when coming into land thrust and drag. So be sure you watch part two, which I'll put right here and comment below if you have any questions. See ya. And also before you go, this is just one of the videos in our landings mastery mini course. And if you want to learn more about it, you can click the link below. And it would also mean the world to me if you like this video, shared it with a fellow student pilot and subscribe to our channel. Peace.